Hello, welcome to the Chess Boxing Podcast. This week we've got the first part of a two-part episode, uh, interview with Carl Ouch, the WCBA World Light Heavyweight Champion. Enjoy. Hi Kevin, how are you doing mate? You right? I'm very good, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, um, I'm in France, I'm working. Uh, I've got a friend who works in flooring. So uh, I thought let's just sort of not lose uh, precious uh, moments and find a, a quick uh, abstract thing that I can do while I'm waiting to uh, uh, do all the logistics for my next festival. Uh, okay, so when you say you're working, uh, is this is this chess related, or is it on the festival, or is it just no, no? This, so this 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 really, I mean, this I'm working like as, as in a proper job. It's only lasting a month, um, and in ten days I'm going back to Serbia, where I, where I now live, and um, so yeah, we we uh, basically uh, now my what I consider my main job is festival organizing. Okay. Um, which 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 is not quite just like well, it's not like a chess boxing event. So I haven't I haven't got there yet. But uh, we have I basically founded the school mm. of chess, and um, and yeah, I mean we we've got some we got some footage of it. You could you know people can go and check that out. Maybe we'll put a link to it somewhere. And uh, yeah, so we can put a link down uh, in in the in the show notes if you like. Um, so when you say festival, you're talking about, uh, is it like a retreat? You go away for like a few days to like a, yeah, a remote location. Yeah. It's, it's, it's halfway between like, uh, I don't know, um, chess lessons in your club and, and some kind of sect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds a bit like chess boxing, really. Uh-huh. Like some sort of it, like. It cult. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> But actually, actually, it's um, well. The idea came to us. It, it, I, I've I've hooked up with two uh, grandmasters um, from Russia and Kazakhstan, mm. and they they speak uh, English, French, and Russian. So uh, we did the first uh, for, um, camp training camp in um, in all three languages. Wow, uh, which was which was a challenge. It was cool on one side, but we, we, it's just way too complicated. So uh this time it's basically going to be uh, the it's, it's basically be in french but then we're going to have like um international english as a as a uh, you know we will we if somebody from the uk wants to come uh, we will be able to fit them in so um, when you say you did it all those all four languages you repeated every lesson in in each language no 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 no. it was just basically a lesson with, with russians and 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 french people uh and some brits and uh we tried to separate them in groups so we didn't have to do okay. all three languages at once so on one side we'd have like french and russian and on the other side we'd have um in, in english and french or or we would do english and russian on one side and like because most of the French guys, they, they, they speak in English these days. I mean, the, okay. the people who play chess, uh, I'm not sure about all the others. So it's tr- uh, truly multicultural then? It's, that's, well, that's the idea. It really is yeah. just like, let's mix everything together, you know, the, the, the social side of things, the um, you know, international kind of uh, chess school. Yeah, yeah and, and the, well, that's it. And the u- universal language of chess, I guess everyone could speak, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, even if you wouldn't speak French, you'd probably grasp. I mean, I about. know en passant. Does that count? En passant. Well, there you go. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the main one, right? That's, uh, uh, but um, so, yeah, how, so how anyway, many of these camps have you done? How many of these so uh, done festivals? One, which was a, we, we did one in, in October, which was a huge success. I mean, with COVID um, and everything, it's, it's a real um, a challenge, I would have thought. We did it in Serbia was a black zone, which is even worse than the red zone. Right. But as everybody was coming from abroad, and we're right out in the sticks, we're in the middle of the mountains, you, you'll be able to check out the videos. Because um, we got we got like a, a half an hour, uh, like documentary film, and we've got a yeah. trailer. Uh, and the website is, is, is uh, hitting the internet tomorrow. I did so see the film. Did, I did see the film. There's some amazing views. Like it's yeah. the, the the village 
it's kind of like on the edge or like at the top of a mountain basically um it's like watching something from a i don't know like an 80s film where the the protagonist goes away and into hiding for like a year and becomes like super good at whatever skill he needs to get good at before he comes back into society is that kind of thing isn't it well that's yeah i mean you're only going to be there for a week but um we, we, we could take that uh, <laughs> analogy yeah uh, i i was hidden away there for a year uh during the whole lockdown i was i was there in the mountains um <clears throat> now fortunately for the uh for the camp we had amazing weather like the day before it was kind of gray uk kind of weather and on the day it started just an amazing blue sky came out and lasted until the very last and and, and the day after when the, the camp ended the very next day there was a storm and the internet was uh well you know was shook and, and everything so it really was we had that that perfect slot of just perfect weather i don't like the way you're slating the uk weather you know oh, come on <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, I've lived abroad mo- most well, most of my life, and and and, and practically my full uh, adult life. I only spent four years in Wales, um, and eight years when I was a kid in Southampton. Now, I I defend English food. Now, against all odds, you know, against everybody is against me. It's like, oh, English food is terrible. I'm like, the big the thing that I miss the most from the is 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 food uh you know be it baked beans shepherd's jelly, pie shepherd's pie steak and kidney pie scotch eggs you name it that's 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 my main and so i i can at least knock the weather you know yeah. <laughs> no you're right it, it can be pretty miserable around here um so you're so you're in serbia full time does that mean you've got our belt over there because it's about that, it's about we, the time uh, you feel about do, defending I, that I, do you I, think, think as, as I'm in France, I can't actually show it to you. I can't. <laughs> I definitely do have it. I, I still do have it. But you, you'd have to put it up for the grabs before I bring it back. I would need a, a good excuse to uh, to come over with it. So you want to? Do you uh, want to? You want to defend it though? Do you, or or you just like to see it fought for again? I could. I could. I guess. I, I was pretty disappointed because I was supposed to do the uh, the the WCBO uh one in in sicily and i actually went out there and i trained i, I saw some photographs on dima's uh instagram i think was yeah, yeah. Dima Agasarian, that is yeah yeah well that's when it was cancelled so me and uh, dima came out and we went on a rampage yeah. and uh, I, I actually came out with more injuries than i would have if if i'd actually fought i think because we we, we got pretty hammered and uh yeah, I came out black and blue of that. I had a sprung an ankle. We, we were, I was, che- we, we, for some reason, we got into some Tom and Jerry kind of game at five o'clock in the morning when I was chasing him around. I ended up with like t- t- 50 year old taxis attacking us with baseball bats. And, uh, and luckily, Dima was a little less drunk than I was. He was able to calm it down. But um, yeah, it was pretty mad. Oh, God. But I had all this, I had all this aggression in me from the training. You know? I see, yeah. And there was no catharsis, so it was just like, ah, you know. So what So what happened? Because um, we weren't due to be involved in that event, so we're a little bit in the dark, but what actually well, happened? Obviously, well, well, okay, well, I went out to, uh, to Sergio Livic, that you know. Mm. I went out to, uh, to I, I stayed uh, with him in his uh, home and his family for two weeks. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I, I, you know what? To be honest, it, the fact that the the, the, the competition was cancelled, I probably wouldn't have gone out to his place if, if there wasn't a competition or something coming up. So as it was like Sicily, Italy, right? I thought, okay, I'll I'll, I'll go out to his place, and uh, you know, I had my own room, and and every and every morning he would get me up. So he had to get up, and he had to bring the kids to school. So I would, we would walk the kids to school, and then we would go to the gym. And have a morning session, and then we'd go to his betting shop where he works, and we would blitz behind the counter, wow. uh, and, until uh, until that was, and that was like you know. So we were doing both, and then in the evening he gives MMA classes. Okay. So I would go back to the gym, and I would have one or two sessions. Uh, you didn't. You didn't do any sparring with him then. I did. I did. Yeah, how was I mean, that? It was obviously he was holding last back. Last time I heard. We should shout out to Sergio because um, he was due to fight on one of our shows, and unfortunately, his opponent got injured. But I think he was coming in at 130 kilos. 
Yeah, 128 he was. was it, yeah. I can tell you, he just has to jab you to, <laughs> to like, you're feeling like, oh, whoa, a truck just hit me. I bet, yeah. Uh, so it's really weight categories and no joke. I would not fight Sergio. No, if, no. If you, I mean, if the money was right, but you'd have to really start putting, I mean, I, I would just sort of say, okay, I will get knocked out and then I'll wake up and I'll have a lump sum. But, but, that, but that's that would it. be the only. <laughs> but I think you're seeing that playing out in in boxing because you get all these huge fighters now. Because to be a heavyweight, you can't just be 100 kilos. You've got to be yeah 130 plus. That, that, because... that was that was 40 years ago, maybe. I know yeah. it's crazy, uh, crazy. And you think like someone like Mike Tyson would just be a dwarf now, wouldn't he? He wouldn't. Have yeah, I mean, he arm. he was actually kind of a dwarf uh, back then. Because yeah, he's five eleven, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm an inch taller than him so that's uh, uh but okay i mean he mike tyson's just like a just a genetic uh, yeah. beast you know it's it's just different planet so it sounds like you had a good time anyway despite the disappointment of yeah the i was i was really disappointed i mean really i i did the i was so ready i felt mm. so ready I, I normally i'm always really nervous and uh here i was like yeah you know i'm gonna i'm just gonna take these guys on i don't care you know and, uh, and, and and Sergio did a really good job preparing me. So, um, mm. yeah, I, I, I was a bit, but okay. I, I, and, and then I, I went to see, oh, what, what happened was, so I, I was a bit depressed for a while and I got hammered a few times. <laughs> As I said, Dima came out to accompany me. And then um, I, I contacted Giuseppe Grasso, who mm -hmm. was my opponent in the Italian job. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and I 2015, him, I, is it? 2015? 2014. 14, okay. July 2014, it was the World Cup. And yeah. and then and then in November, we had the rematch in Berlin, which Tim came out with Zena, and they were in my corner. Nice. And uh, So, yeah, so I fought him twice, and uh, I was like, well, I'm not every day in Sicily. You know, I, I better give him a buzz. And uh, he was like, Carl Ouch is in Sicily. It's like, dude, you have to come. And I, I, I went, I took the train. I went there uh, to, cause he's in Catania. He's not in Palermo. Mm. So you go basically how it's East coast, West coast sort of thing. Okay. And, okay. Um, and, and I love Catania. It, it was really nice. And uh, he, he didn't want to let me leave. He, you know, <laughs> He didn't want to, he was like, no, no, just cancel. You know, I was like, yeah, man, I got a flight. He's like, yeah, I just cancel that. Just, you know, and, uh, and his father, uh, you know, was there and uh, uh, we're having lunch and he's like, well, who's, who's this guy? You know, it's like, yeah, it's Carl Ouch, you know what I mean? And, and he, and, and his dad is like his biggest fan. Yeah. You know, he yeah. loves chess boxing. And so he took a picture, he immediately put it on Facebook. This is the real sport, you know, uh, uh, for you know, lifetime friendships. Awesome. And also, yeah, no. Yes, boxing fraternity. That's what it, it is. Yeah, it, it is. It is. That is what it's about. So um, no, yeah. I, I, and we put that in practice. You know, we put it in yeah. practice. Is is a, is a, is a special bond you have with somebody when you fought them? That is, isn't it? It's quite definitely. Quite, quite yeah. I mean, I mean, I fought Toby twice also, and mm. uh, I mean Toby. To be honest, he I actually stepped on his. So for before I even fought him, <laughs> uh, I, after the fight with Pope, he immediately came up to me and, and, and sort of, you know, we befriended each other. And then I, I woke up on his couch the next morning. So uh, there you go. And, uh, yeah, there's a bromance and then, and then, before you got in the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so and and then I fought him twice. And oh yeah, it's like you know, what 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 do you what's your problem? What do you need done? I'm there for you. You know. Nice, nice. So it sounds like you've been pretty busy with these festivals. Are you going to do a, a festival that is um, specifically for chess boxing, or is, are they just going to be chess festivals? Well, this this so this is my idea. So last time, basically, I had uh, we, we 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 had like uh, seven days of chess, six hours of six hours a day. Mm. You know, so it's basically in the morning, you you we we decide on a theme, which could yeah. be any theme. Um, we, we give exercises to solve. That's like right in the morning when, when you're not fresh, because basically it's going to be waking you up. Mm -hmm. you just 
the waking up with exercises, it's really tough to do it at that time. You know, you're not usually you do it later on in the day. And, and then, so you get used to the theme and then we show maybe a game or two uh, of, um, you know, on that particular theme, like a, a reference game. And then, so whether we, that, that lasts for two hours. And then, then we have lunch and we have some time to do some sport. And then at three o'clock in the uh, 3 p.m., we, we go back and now we're all, so we basically divided it in two groups. And then in the afternoon, we all come together in one room and we keep that theme. We put a position on the board, which is similar to, um, to, to, to you know, what we were doing in the morning. And we have them play it out with white and with black, 15 minutes each. So then this is like the practical thing. And like Vlad Kachev, who's, who's, he was, you know, European champion 2007. He was 18th player in the world. His best is 2,672. You know, he's played Kasparov, he's played Karpov, I mean, he's played all the top wow. players. Um, and so him and Murtas uh, Kazgaleyev, um, they, they are basically going around the room, checking what people are doing. Mm. And then we have an analysis, what they saw, the themes that they saw, like who put that, who put this idea in practice, who put this one, and another. And then in the evening, we have an extra hour session where it's much more about either history. There's a lot more talking. It's a much more relaxed. You can actually come with your beer. And, and, and so it's chilling out. So that, that was our model. And you all eat together as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we, common, we have a huge, yeah. Yeah, there's a huge restaurant. It's, it's uh, food uh, à volonté, you know, uh, eat mm. as much as you can three times a day. Uh, that's all included in the price with the hotel and, and everything. So, uh, no, I mean, like, Serbia, definitely the rates are cheaper. So, yeah, uh, you know, you're coming out, you're going to be, you're going to have, you're going to be happy, you know. You well, if you, um, if, like, if, if you need a couple of boxing coaches, uh, Matt Reed and I are qualified boxing coaches now. <laughs> is that, are you putting down your, uh, <laughs> is that, is well, that a volunteer I've, job? Or I've got very a, cheap rates. Yeah, very cheap rates. And we're going to, we're level one and we're looking to get a level two uh, this or this uh, spring. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, and, and also, you know, Matt and I occasionally take chess boxing uh, classes. So, you know, we've got some experience now of doing boxing. Well, listen, I'll, I'll do, I'll do your deal. I'll, I'll, I'll straight, I mean, if you, if you get a gang from mm. LD, uh, LDN chess boxing. Yeah. If you get a gang of, let's say, 10 people together. Yeah. Uh, you, I, I, will, I will make sure that you, uh, you have a, a good, you know, you have a good deal when you come. And that's it for this week. We'll have the part two of the interview with Carl Ouch in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you would like to go to Carl's festival, it's on the 17th of April to the 28th of April. You can find all the information you need at chess-magic.com. Uh, there's also a link uh, in the show notes below this podcast. And don't forget, tickets are now on sale for Chess Boxing Mayhem. That's the 28th of May in London. So go to chessboxingnation.com and get your tickets there. Many thanks. <laughs> <laughs>